This is sulfuric acid. It has a chemical formula of H2SO4 and a molar mass of 98.079 grams per mole. It's used widely in the chemical industry from the production of fertilizers to bleaching sugar to the synthesis of chemotherapy drugs. It's often referred to as the king of chemicals because of how numerous its applications are as a raw material or a processing agent. However, this raises one major question for the most commonly used chemical in the world. How do we produce sulfuric acid? The production of sulfuric acid can be broken into four stages. The extraction of sulfur, the conversion of sulfur to sulfur dioxide, the conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide, and the conversion of sulfur trioxide to sulfuric acid. While there are several sources of sulfur, one common source is from natural gases and oils. The extraction of sulfur from these underground deposits is made possible by the frash process. Put simply, three tubes are introduced into an underground sulfur deposit. Superheated water and hot air are injected through two of the tubes, forcing the sulfur deposit to froth and eventually rise up the third tube where it is collected. The conversion of sulfur to sulfur dioxide looks a little like this. Molten sulfur is blasted into a furnace at roughly 1300 Kelvin. As it burns, the gases are passed through waste heat boilers to reduce the temperature to a more moderate 700 Kelvin. In fact, for every one ton of sulfur produced, one ton of steam is as well. This is where things go from fairly straightforward to very complex. The conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide is often referred to as the contact process and can be expressed as such. The mixture of sulfur dioxide and oxygen is in equal proportion by volume, and since Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of gases at equal pressures and temperatures will contain equal numbers of molecules, we know that the gases are going into the reactor at a ratio of one molecule of sulfur dioxide for every one molecule of oxygen. However, this means there is an excess of oxygen relative to the proportion indicated by the equation. Because of Le Chatelier's principle, we know that this stress on the reaction will cause it to shift towards the right, favoring the production of sulfur trioxide. Contrary to what you might think, however, temperature is not reduced to favor the right side in the production of sulfur trioxide, but instead kept around 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. This is because reducing the temperature will reduce the rate of the reaction, so manufacturers have found that the compromised temperature to be around 400 and 450 degrees Celsius produces a fairly high proportion of sulfur trioxide in a relatively short amount of time. Finally, the sulfur trioxide is dissolved in sulfuric acid to produce what is known as fuming sulfuric acid. If this step is skipped, the sulfur trioxide will produce a large quantity of dangerous fumes when mixed with water, so the fuming sulfuric acid step is essential for the manufacturing process. The fuming sulfuric acid is then mixed with water to form the final product, sulfuric acid. That's how we produce sulfuric acid, and that's the role that equilibrium plays in the contact process of turning sulfur dioxide into sulfur trioxide. Thank you for watching.